Hello and welcome to Forestville United Methodist Church. I'm Sybil Perrell, the pastor here and at Olivet Church in Lylesville, North Carolina. I hope you'll stay with me as we begin to look at uh, this season of Lent. Uh, this is the first Sunday in Lent. And we'll be looking today at how we were in the wilderness during the pandemic, but we're still in the wilderness today, being tested and tempted during our time here. But let's begin our worship with a moment of prayer. Lord, we are in the wilderness almost each and every day, it seems. Lead us through the temptations we face by filling us with your spirit and your wisdom. In your name we pray, amen. We are still in the Gospel of Mark today, but we're going back to the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, to Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. I'm reading from the New International Version today. I hope you'll read along with me. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the, court, in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> in the wilderness. We felt like we were in the wilderness back during the pandemic, didn't we? And we still feel that way today, but perhaps the nature of our wilderness has changed some. Back in February 2021, which was the first time I used this sermon, or at least parts of it, we were in the midst of church and business shutdowns. People were working from home, confined there with few opportunities to be with those outside of their families. But we also saw a lot of division, hate, and all kinds of temptations. And we still see those today. Feeling we're like the Israelites in the wilderness for a long, long time with all that's happening in our country, in our world. And sometimes we feel at a loss as to how to deal with it all. But instead of thinking about the wilderness as a time to be lost and afraid, we need to think about the testing, the temptation aspect of it all. What is it about the continuing threat of COVID, RSV, all those other things, the divisions, the hate that are tempting us or testing us? And how do we deal with it all now? Let's look at Jesus' example here to, as to how to deal with testing in the wilderness. Jesus shows us through the gospel writers that he was never really alone while he was battling the temptations Satan threw at him. And we don't have to do it all alone either. Now the scripture says Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. But this isn't used as an exact number here. We see this phrase over and over in the Bible, 40 days of rain for Noah, 40 days on Mount Sinai for Moses, and more than 100 times throughout, the, especially the Old Testament. Sometimes it just means for a while. And sometimes it specifically is talking about a time of trial or testing. And before we go further, let's talk about Satan for a minute. A Satan, with a little s, is the adversary in the Bible. Not 
necessarily a bad thing, someone or something that gets in the way of what we want or need to do. God's angel was a Satan who stood in front of Balaam and his donkey in that story. Certainly not a bad thing. But then Satan became more of a tester as we moved into the prophets. Again, though, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We need to be tested once in a while. Otherwise, we stagnate. We have to try our wings, so to speak, stretch ourselves. It's when we grow. Think about the seeds and plant in your gardens in the spring. If the seeds didn't push against the soil on top of them, they wouldn't ever be anything but a seed. They had to test their strength to be able to grow. And think about birds. It's been found that you shouldn't help a chick get out of the egg by breaking the egg. It takes strength and persistence to break through the shell. And that strength and persistence is needed throughout the bird's life to keep it strong. Even butterflies have to fight and use all their strength to break free of their cocoons. But it is needed for them to be able to have the strength to fly as they do, sometimes thousands of miles. All of God's creatures test their limits, going through trials to live a full life. God has made them that way so that they will be strong and able to face whatever comes their way. We are also one of God's creatures. We tend to forget that. And we must be tested. Our faith is made stronger by the conquering of temptation and depending more and more on our God. Trusting God to guide us through. Making us strong, not physically, but spiritually. Just as Jesus trusted God during those days in the wilderness. Around the book of Job, Satan becomes a capital S. A specific entity. Satan still is answering to God, though. He's almost like a prosecutor trying to find fault with humans and bring those faults to God's attention. It's not a hard job, really, since we're always messing up. Then it becomes clear that if Satan can't find anything, he'll just make something up. Ah, now he really is a devil which means slanderer, someone who lies to get what he wants. It's not really until the New Testament that we see Satan as an adversary, not for us humans, but for God himself. And I think it really starts here with the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. You see, on the one hand, God is telling Jesus to go and share the good news with people, to to help people understand how much God loves them by loving them that same way, even if it means going to his death. On the other hand, Satan is telling Jesus that will take too long, that he has this power, use it now. Just take over and force people to accept him as the Christ, the Messiah. Be the military leader the people want. Get rid of the Romans with just a wave of your hand. This is the struggle Jesus is facing in the wilderness, and this is why he needed all the help he could get to be able to withstand that pressure. And how did Jesus do it? He did it by having helpers with him. We have those same helpers today when we're in the wilderness, when we're tempted to follow an easier path than God's way when we're tested by the circumstances around us. Jesus had the Holy Spirit with him. Granted, it was the Spirit that sent Jesus into the wilderness in the first place, but it was needed for him to face temptation now rather than when he encountered problems later in his ministry so he could respond in that godly, loving way rather than just use his power to get rid of them. Problems with the Pharisees and the priests, problems with the Romans, 
even problems with his own disciples. Once we accept Jesus as our Savior, the Holy Spirit is with us, helping us when we face situations. It's that voice in your head that tells you this is not a good thing. Or just that feeling that you're going the wrong way. That gut feeling that something's just not right. But the Holy Spirit also helped Jesus with each of the temptations that he faced. Mark keeps it short, as is his way, and doesn't go into what the tests were. But we know from the other synoptic gospels that there were three temptations, food, testing physical limits, and power. Each time Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus had a comeback. It was with the Spirit's help that he remembered a scripture that countered what, G what Satan had told him. And remember, Satan quotes scripture too, but he always takes it out of context. Does that remind you of situations you've been through yourself where someone quotes a verse of scripture to fulfill their point of view? It has been the justification for things like slavery and war and even that women can't speak or be called by God. Jesus had animals with him. The animals that inhabit the desert wilderness were not ones you'd first think of as companions. There was the bear, the leopard, eagles and vultures, and snakes like the adder and asp. We don't usually think of those bringing much comfort or help to us. But in the Garden of Eden, the animals were Adam's companions. Isaiah tells us that the kingdom of God is here on earth and when it comes that the, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid and a little child shall lead them. Now, you may disagree with my interpretation here, but my thought is that the animals realized who Jesus was and they were truly his companions helping him through these temptations, comforting him at the end of a hard day, keeping him warm at night. I know animals are great therapists for us today. They calm us and ease our hurts and burdens. They lower our blood pressures and our anxiety levels. And not just our household pets. Bird song soothes us. Watching birds in flight thrills us. Watching fish in a palm kind of hypnotizes us. Watching squirrels play makes us laugh, easing our burdens without even realizing it. And animals are more intuitive than people. They sense our pain, our anxiety, our grief, even our blood sugar levels. So I think the animals recognize Jesus as the Messiah that the kingdom of God was at hand and they gave him comfort and kept him warm on those cold desert nights. We found how much animals mean to us during the pandemic. A lot of people got pets during that time to help them through the loneliness. I don't know what I would have done without my cat during the pandemic and since then. He makes me laugh. He comforts me when I'm sad and he keeps me warm on cold nights. Finally, Jesus had angels with him too. I firmly believe there are still angels among us today, maybe in the guise of someone we actually know who gives us just the right advice at just the right time, or someone who knows you're hurting and is there for you, comforting you and helping you to see the way forward. Maybe it's a song on the radio that touches you in a special way. These people are angels to us at a time when we need it. So everything that Jesus had to help him in his wilderness experience, we have in our wilderness today. 
but we have to ask for that help, that comfort, that advice. We have to know the scripture well enough to know when it's being taken out of context. And we have to listen to that inner voice as well as the advice of others. And sometimes we just need our animal friends to give us solace and comfort and calm our fears. Whenever you feel you're in the wilderness, being tempted to leave the hard, narrow path and take the easier way, remember what Jesus did. Remember what he had to help him in his wilderness. It's there to help you too. Today, United Methodist churches are going through a wilderness of loss and grief and uncertainty about our future. Some are looking with some trepidation on the upcoming general conference and what it will mean for our denomination. We can only overcome these things by trusting our God to lead us as Jesus was led in the wilderness. There is war in the Middle East and in Eastern Europe, and we worry about these escalating into a war that will use nuclear or chemical devices or become a world war. We must turn our eyes toward Jesus and remember how he dealt with his anxieties. Jesus spent time in prayer, allowing God to ease his burdens and show him the way to go. And there is violence in our own country. Another mass shooting just this week. Today is the 49th day in 2024, and we have had 48 mass shootings in our country in that same time frame. This causes us great fear, and the, the temptation is to hunker down within our, our walls and hope someone will fix it. But my people, it may be that we are the ones who need to fix it. We need to not only pray that God will intervene in all the war and violence, but that God will give us the strength and the courage to stand up and say, no more. We may be God's answer to the violence. People need the church, not as a judge and prosecutor showing them how they failed, but as their advocate and their companion just like those animals and angels with Jesus in the wilderness. There are a lot of people lost and afraid these days because they have no hope, no love in their lives. Perhaps we're the one who can show them hope and love, shining a light on who God is and how God can help them overcome. During this season of Lent, ask God to help you through the wilderness, to send you help and companions to guide you, and to be willing to stand up to Satan as Jesus stood up to him. Showing through our actions that we follow the risen Savior all the way through the desert and beyond. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you are worthy of our faith and trust. Help us to trust you more. We thank you that Kay is better and that those who have been sick are back with us. We thank you that Cassie has a full-blown plan now and things are moving forward for her surgery. We thank you that Cecile did well with her surgery and now is looking at next steps. We ask your presence with Dewey and that you will ease his pain, help the doctors to find the cause of that pain and give them the knowledge and skill needed to help him. We ask your comfort to be with the people of Kansas City as they mourn the one killed and all those who were injured in the shooting this week. Guide us all in finding a solution to all this violence in our country. And we ask for your hand to help in the mediation of the violence and war in the Middle East and in Ukraine. Guide their leaders, giving them needed vision and restraint as they make decisions that could impact the entire world. 
All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our example in temptation, our friend and companion in the wilderness and always. Amen. Our hymn today is the first verse of number 368 in the United Methodist Hymnal, My Hope is Built. The words are by Edward Mott, and the music is by William Bradbury. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Our announcements this week are as follows. Bible study at 5.30 today and 10 a.m. on Monday. Come join us as we begin our Lenten video study on the final week of Jesus' life. The February mission for both Forestville and Olivet is hygiene and toiletry items, toothbrushes and paste, deodorant, body wash and soap, combs, brushes, all of that stuff for Anson Crisis Ministry. If you'd like to make a comment, you can type that in here on Olivet's Facebook page or on YouTube. If you'd rather talk with me, you can call or text at 704-640-6872. If you'd like to send us a letter or would like to contribute to one of our missions, then write your check to each, whichever church uh, and send it to P.O. Box 452, Lylesville, North Carolina, 28091. Now, receive this blessing. May God go with you in the wilderness that you face, guiding you, directing you on the right path through his spirit. Face down temptation and trust in that spirit as you continue your daily walk through Lent. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. <music>